with it. All right, it is um, 610 and we will call the Center Vermont Career Center School District Board meeting to order. It's Monday, September 11th, 2023. Um, thanks everybody for the combination for those of you in person and those of you logging in. Um, sorry, I'm fighting a migraine, so I just prefer to be at home today and appreciate everyone accommodating that. Um, do we have any members of the public in the room? I don't see any on, okay, on the, um, do we have any revisions to the agenda? I just want to apologize for leaving out the minutes on the board packet. So you did have the link to them in the agenda, but I forgot to include them in the packet. So I can send that to people if you need it. Okay. Yeah, I found it through the agenda. No problem. Um, and I might just ask, since I think I'll be able to tell for calling on folks, but I might need some help in the room if we have a lot of, if we have any conversation or anything like that, I might need help with uh, calling on folks. Um, okay, great. Um, do we have a motion to approve our meeting minutes from August 14th, 2023? I'll move that we approve the meeting minutes from August 14th, 2023. Thanks, Jana. Do I have a second? I'll second, Guy. Thanks, Guy. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No, okay, so we've passed our meeting minutes from August 14th. Thanks Lyman for running that meeting, appreciate it. Um, and it looked like at that meeting, Jody, you mentioned that the, um, and forgive me, I don't have the name up. Someone um, on your team is working to identify new student members for us. Yes, and we did reach out to um, student leadership team is taking applications now. So students are self selecting for that. Those applications were due today. I did reach out to a student who's been really interested in moving that forward faster. And she had to work tonight. So she wasn't able to come. Okay, that's great. Sounds like then, then she had some response. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm really bummed to see that we were, did we have a program presentation of baking and culinary arts? Does that mean we're missing some yummy food? It's so early in the year that I doubt it. I think we're going to get a little tour of the space though. Okay, great. Is there someone there in the room that's um, hosting that presentation? They are going to host us down there. So we need to move down there. Okay. All right. Shall we do that? Ready for a field trip? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll take you on a walk. Awesome. Uh, well, welcome. This is uh, where we make magic happen every day. So the baking arts um, bake shop is here. And this is the culinary kitchen. This is the baking. This is Wendy Clark. Wendy Clark, Clark baking arts instructor, and I'm Steve McShefrey, the culinary arts instructor. So welcome. We want to start out um, by telling you a little bit of how the program works for the students. Do you want to do the yearly breakdown of how we start? And where we we've got this pretty much down. There's no script, but we've said it so many times as it's the kind of the spiel that we give all our students that we interview every year. Um, can you all hear me all right? Yeah. This is at the very much the norm for us and our students is that we hold classroom in commercial kitchen. Um, so we have put systems, sometimes there's equipment going, it's very noisy, so it's a good reminder for all of us to speak up. So once our interview process is done and our students start arriving to us on the first day of school, we have four weeks of intense surf safe, which is food safety, and then SP2, which is workplace safety. So before our students are even allowed to start working with food, we need to know that they are going to work safely themselves, physically in the workspace, as well as they know what to do to keep food safe. Because we know that foodborne illnesses are becoming more and more of a rampant problem in the industry these days. Once those four, first four weeks are done, students test for their Serve Safe Manager certification. Um, it's essentially a college level certificate that students will receive. And along with receiving that, they'll receive two college credits from White Mountain Community College, which is part of the community college system in New Hampshire. Since we no longer have an offering with our state within our state anymore, they are the closest culinary and baking arts 
um, sec post-secondary college that we work with. From there, we break the class again. This gives us a good idea, too, to see, like, maybe these two won't be so good together. We need to separate those. So we can usually handle it for four weeks. So after that, then we are able to split up the group again. So then we split them in half. And then for the next 11 weeks, they are very much focused on the specialty of their foundations in culinary arts or the foundations in baking arts. Um, surprisingly, those 11 weeks go by really fast. And then at the end of those 11 weeks, the two groups switch. So now they're getting their full foundation in both subject matters. Surprisingly, I noticed that was really fast, but we're now in fourth quarter in our, in our brains. And fourth quarter to us brings co-op opportunities. So students that are interested in being a cooperative education student coming back the following year, we give them a chance to do job shadows and find where they really feel their place is so that they don't have to commit to a job and then get into it and realize it's not what they thought it was. We have some really great job shadow opportunities. And we have three students in co-op this year that come back once a week and are doing well in their jobs. And we have a connection with um, the food service nutrition director at CBMC. Mm -hmm. And he has um, asked yes, the other advisor board and he said yes. So he was yes. coming to our first meeting, so it's a good addition and a good connection. And really um, we also do staff pickup meals at that time. Because of being in, in a public school and our physical location within the school, we can't be open to the public. Um, and we aren't allowed to serve students unless it's for free. Um, so we chose to do a staff pickup lunch and utilizing both Spalding High School and CDCC employees, we generally had about 40 to 50 orders that come in every Friday. The students help develop the menu, they help ex execute all of the preparation and production. And then when it comes to Friday, this is their chance to have customer service. So they have to actually speak to these teachers they don't know and speak loud enough for them to hear. And then we like to throw in to you also have to make some change yeah. for people because people are paying with money. Um, and then they actually get a little taste of the fast paced kitchen environment where no they have. No pun to, intended. They also, oh, there's always yes. Yes. <laughs> they Especially also, if they're baking related. <laughs> we're also able to throw in the costing as well. So, you know, we don't have a bottom line, so we can solve things at cost mm -hmm. where we can call them to sign and care for like, you know, if you're going to go get a mac and cheese at one stone or a burger at one stone, you're probably going to walk away with just with the food and with over 20 bucks. And most of our meals are like five dollars. So we prepare that, like, you know, why is this so? And we give them thinking about overhead costs and the gas and the lights and labor costs. Mm -hmm. So we, that's our time where we can really compare that with it makes sense. We do costing with them on recipes, but this is where it kind of like it solidifies more, I'd say. But it would have made sale items as well. And the food truck that we here in the there. So, if you didn't know, we have been lucky to have a food truck at Trades Fair that Cornerstone lets us use and the business community has an experience with that. So thinking about how much we sell, we can talk about how much we actually sell this work and how much they'd be somewhere else. So again, the cost of this. Um, we, didn't, we lost a huge part of customer service when my program was pulled back on campus. I was off campus for nine years, located in Sidewalk Village. And students have the opportunity on a daily basis to work with customers directly. Um, changes in COVID, I was brought back. Um, and that also took away Christine's dining room space because now her dining room space is a quarter of the size that I was off campus. And now I'm in a smaller space here where I don't have access directly to my oven. We have to use the oven here. So if anything, it really simulates a real workplace um, because this is one of the biggest kitchens students will get to work in. They'll get to the workplace and their workspace will be about this big, and they're like, there's six of us? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and because we're so good at what we do, um, we're able to really work well together, and we've created this really awesome program where they're getting all the fundamentals of the corner and thinking. Ideally, it would be awesome if we had separate spaces where we can have more students, of course, but we've made it like really, really work and really believe that. And they're getting a full rounded, like, crash course into. If it was me, I think about what I learned in culinary school. I, I took a long time in like school. I think these students are getting really great foundations as if they did a first year in culinary um, a program. Program. So they're getting valuable information by getting both sides. Would it be nice for us to have them a little bit longer to extend what we do now? Combine 
parts of the building that we've actually been in three sites, which we've already done in the cards, with the, uh, which we're adding, which is serve safe. They get the two college credits that you don't have to use just at White Mountain either. So it's wherever they can take those college credits with them. It's not an articulation or anything that you pass at least it has to be to take those credits. They're theirs. And we're adding on three more college credits this year from White Mountain's after agreement for getting the culinary foundations. So by the end of this year, if they are the leader of the program, they will get three college credits. And that is based on their attendance, how well they are uh, meeting the competencies. And then our sign on. Will they get five? They will get five total with uh, surfing. Nice. So, how does this compare to like Capstone as a culinary program? Do you work with them at all or is it completely separate? We don't work with them. It's a whole separate program. And that's better for adults. Oh, I see. So, okay. you know, we could take adult students, but we're doing both for them to do that. Okay. But an adult student a little bit older wants to take a culinary program, that would be the place to go. Okay. That's where I like helping people go for that. Okay. We do, we are in connection with them. I know who runs that program. Okay. Do you have any feel for what the majority of the kids do after they're with you? Or they go on to culinary school? Or they go right into the workforce? Or do they bag it all the way? Um, I think in the past few years, I think most of them have gone either to culinary school or they're in the, the industry right now. We have students that are still in the area that are still working in the same business that they've been for 10 years, so the way side. We've got um, two to three students down at Cornerstone right now. One is working local guys. We have another student who the owner of Bueno. They told me when they come to this meeting to um, brag about how well um, one of our students from last year is doing down there. And she's very excited to have them, have them there. So they're being placed. Some have gone even further. And these are all co op students or students who are Students that graduate from the program or are on co op, some do these other things. So, but I'd say a good percentage of them are in the industry that you do that. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely the numbers of students going on to college has definitely uh, decreased over the years, especially a lot of students. Our students like to stay within the state of Vermont, leaving the state's kind of scary. And when we don't have that opportunity within the state, they either choose to pick a different career if they really are set to go to college in state or they will go into the workforce and there's really there's so much opportunity for growth in the workforce uh, you just have to be willing to work your way up and that's really where christine and i try to drive to students that every single job in a kitchen is important if the dishwasher doesn't show up your whole system could go down for anything is the credentials the, the industry industry recognized credentials that are they're earning from our program are given them a leg up. So one of our folks students started at the Reservoir in Waterbury mm -hmm. as a hostess and then we they said, Oh, you're in the program from the kitchen and just like our Mange South and Whole Foods and they were like, What? Like, we want to be line, we want to be co op here and we're gonna give you more money and I mean I mean Doing. She's really right. happy because, and so she came back and I was that uh, new crop students were here and, and I said, can you tell them a little bit about, like, do you think that this program really helped you and what did you learn and how do you um, use it at work? And she said, oh my God, I use everything that both of you taught me all the time and people are just really impressed that I know this stuff because it's pretty good. Cool. And that's how I didn't say that's not what it's possible for them. It's been a long day. <laughs> Do they interact with any of the local producers or uh, festival food or any of that? Um, is there a connection with our local? There are farms. I mean, we do. We do. We do. Yeah. And when natural resources were here, we used to do a little bit of collaboration. Yeah. With them, and we can use products like uh, they can rub off a bunch of tomatoes, make a bunch of sauce, or some of the tomatoes, or we have a squash. Like, I'm going to swap soup, stuff like that. We're going to get apples and press apples okay. in this year with XLO Tech. So, we definitely do sustainability and local, and a big um, part of like this class we took this summer at Johnson and Wales. Wendy and I both went to the class this summer on food innovations. And a big, uh, a lot of the talk was about food systems and where we are and where how we got here and what we need to do to maybe turn. Turn that beat around, right? And I've been 
I think we both have been putting that into our curriculums for a while now. So when I was thinking this process, I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm kind of at the end of the game. I feel like, like kind of good that I've already been doing that. Yeah, it's hard. Our food system is not in the best place. That's what I'm and local vegetables right now are the best. This yeah. is the time of year, I brought in some tomatoes for the kids the other day and sliced them up and did local places. And trying to change my mind about there's always that seems like I don't want tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> so we tried the tomato with all the stuff on it and he ate it and he's like, This is like so good. I don't want tomatoes. And I was like, You probably have never had a fresh tomato. You're used to like the mealy tomato that's been gassed in a truck that came from Mexico or California. And it's, Wasting all the gas and all the things just to get it here, and uh, that's the tomato you're eating off the shelf. There's a fresh tomato, don't put it in fresh. I just really went on up. No. <laughs> we all learned something. <laughs> Does anyone, I know it's probably hard to hear online. Is there any questions from anyone? Guy? So if you have an Instagram, well, follow us. We're welcome to more followers and I've been there for quite a while. It's really uh, empowering to see you guys stay around and be so good. How long has it been since you can combine the program? Three years. Three years. So three glorious in June of twenty twenty, <laughs> Christine and I packed up my commercial kitchen and moved it back. Yeah, and I know that was tough. It was the but best of times. Yeah. It was the worst. So I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a sentence, and you guys are going to continue. So merging the program three years ago has done what for students? Provided them immediate access to both baking and culinary foundational skills in one program in one year. It has done what for the students? Just have to put a thing. Yeah. Um, I. It's kind of like the one negative I can say in that sentence is that it's taken some time away from us, from them having us for a full year, because we're so great and have so much to, to teach. But I would back up what Wendy said that they're getting such a well-rounded foundation in one year if they don't want to take it a second year. So, I think. The way we are, and because we're in this industry, we're just able to make something for super language kick ass no matter what we're dealt with. Well, thank, thank you. Can I ask a question? Because I'm on the Twinfield School Board, and right now we're having issues about should we have a policy, and I did see it in the handbook, but I'm wondering how that's working out. That's great. I've been doing this for. 14 years really? it's only problem on day one if you come in with strong consistent expectations and clear rules it's not an issue i don't have to ask for them at 8 30 the rule is they can be in here at eight o'clock eating breakfast hanging out chatting 8 30 it's in the box they've got a they've got their little zip lock that wendy wrote all their names on so beautifully they put their earbuds Oh, we, we really wrote specifically, <laughs> and everybody has a link to this in the agenda or somewhere. I'm going to share it with them all. If you want a paper copy, you can take home and frame, and uh, <laughs> put it in your scrapbook. Some really good rules in here to live by. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's this, right? It's yes. thick. Uh, it's not from the back, sorry. Trees. Yeah. That is it's one of the three syllabuses that we provide yeah. students. This is the general overall. Um, and then they have a serve safe syllabus because it is a very structured rigid program and it's from the national restaurant association um i had to be we both became instructors and proctors and you think with the paperwork we had to sign that we were in the cia and not down in our institute of america blood sample hair sample um, so that along with white mountains community college we also do have to provide them additional syllabuses to um show exactly how they're getting the two college credits from the food service sanitation and then the three college credits from the but foundations. Again, because we're so awesome, <laughs> we didn't have to do a lot of work on our uh, White Mountains uh, syllabus by because we were able to take from our syllabus by that we already had made and then put it into their format 
And because you have to do that and you have to send it in, they approve it. Yeah, send it right back, yes, approved, and we'll sign this, and now we're good. But we, I didn't have to do any extra work, and Wendy didn't either, either for Serve Safe or the um, Culinary Foundations, which I have a little link up there. It's just the, the description for my Jill has it right Who? Jill. Oh. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry I'm not there. Thank you guys so much. How dare um, you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I even got my food delivered to me while that's <laughs> Um, so, um, as part of our board, like, sort of looking ahead and seeing how we can support you, are there things, like, big or little, that, gosh, if we had more space, if we had a way to serve more people and get generate income, like, what are some things that the board might be able to help facilitate like, for you yes. guys in the future? <laughs> That's a fair question. Um, hearing all those things, I was like, uh, all of those things would be good. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you are you guys want... turning students away? Like, do you have a? We have a wait list. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we did because we know that we are only able to take fourteen students. We are also um, very aware as we're doing our interview that we're we're going to choose students that can find success for themselves in our program. Um, Unfortunately, we'll have a lot of students sent to us that they just want, I just want to learn to cook and eat, which is great, but it's not, we need students that really want to learn and want to learn deep and want to learn the safety and the potential that can happen in our programs, we, in our industry. Then we want to fill the jobs, mm -hmm. more right. importantly. So we if we have work. a student who gets in, who's not serious about this being an actual career path, and then there's a kid on the waiting list that actually wants to be in this industry. That's where it gets a little tough, right? Sure. If your programs were separated again, how many students could you take? I in could this, in this space. No. Okay. In the state of the art facility. <laughs> well, I was to move line. off campus again. I would be able to have 12 students given the equipment that I have. Um, and again, that just opens us up wide for the community to actually see what high school students do. And we had fabulous feedback from our local community in Barrie the nine years that we were downtown. I think um, we were able to take in this space a long time ago, 16, but I think for me, that's too many. Um, I think that once we have too many students learning these types of skills, we have to be kind of able to get to all of them. I think students get lost in that even with a pair um, at times it's hard to jump all around and so it they can become a safety concern comfortable yeah. comfortable number would probably be like a 12 as well um, yeah so that could be 26 students that are in the culinary class so I have a question apropos of Jill's question and that's how can you help us to recruit people who you know who might want to work with the board as a member of the facilities committee to help us find a state-of-the-art space that becomes the new career center? That is a hard question. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I honestly don't have an answer. I don't, I don't know. I know we have, as far as, I am both, we are both born and raised in the very community. I know that the Barry community has very strong roots to the Career Center yeah. and they do see it, they can see it through the lens of being separate from Spalding High School. Mm -hmm. So I think within Central Vermont we have a lot of supporters as far as a specific individual. None come to mind but I can think of calling the Barry Area Development Court and um, the Barry Partnership. They are both great resources of people that are looking to Make Central Vermont better. Top ten answers on the board. Show me. And one thing that would be nice about a new center is if it actually had appropriate um, heating and ventilation. Yeah, it's really nice in here. There's no windows. <laughs> Last week in this. Yeah. yeah. Was there Let's is see. once um, when we're teaching at the same time we have to shut down our doors between our spaces and that classroom has supposedly one air vent going in and one going out if there is no air airflow air yeah the hood is only does so much and the other thing is no natural light so my dream 
we can have some natural light somewhere. We were going to put a skylight in, but maybe it said no. But it was on our list. We were just wrote it in really small, like skylight. And it didn't happen. As you can see, because you would have math student feet behind We ain't going to prove I got approval for math and. It was going to go all the way through. It was going to be like a tunnel. There were five It was going to be cut out and then cut out and then cut out all the way up to the. Oh, that's so funny. We do feel like idea. moles at the end of the day coming out. Yeah. We're like, look at the sunset. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little, especially the first year, my first year, when I came here until like seven. Like, yeah, you yeah. can lose track of time completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank, uh, you, thank you, Oh, but Instagram, that is how to follow. Um, I can just show you a couple highlights from our. I'm very, we're very proud of our Instagram. <laughs> 190 followers, that's more than um, I have. Wait, I'll follow you guys right now. Right now. Okay, Sal. CBCC underscore baking underscore culinary. Got it. All right. So, so we've also had um, the chefs from White Knots we called also come and do some demos and stuff too. So they've been learning lots of stuff from breaking down salmon. And breaking down half pig, so they're seeing things in real time, and it's just pretty cool. Uh, this is one of our end of the year. We play some music to it. We got that. Try to make it a little cute, funny at times. We don't take ourselves too seriously, but the food is serious. It's always serious. Like you see how clean they were, and I'll have just walk in front of them. So we set up a kind of like a board system that the Google Chrome goes out and then pick up days, check in, pay, pick up Google over here. Yeah. We got water, the cluster, the food, the people, 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 the Couple. And then with the associated funds for the students at the end of each school year, we get them a chef coat to wear for Jet graduation. So, so we don't have to deal with any dress code issues. Yeah. And we also get them a sweatshirt which you should wear. Right? Right. So he was so excited. All year long, he's like, I'm going to teach you some fun facts about Go around the classroom to begin there and ask what is something that you haven't done before that you might want to do and I can make a little list and then throughout the year with depending on what uh, unit we're on I kind of sneak those things in mm -hmm. to the student let them make them more think about it so it was salmon 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 so we got the salmon in and he broke down salmon and he was excited. Who did the filming? Me. Oh. So just on those. Uh, we will film stuff, we will take pictures. I'm the corny one that puts all the corny stuff in there. <laughs> sure. We don't post my pictures, they're terrible. Oh, you're so she comes and does them again. No, you do take your pictures and I use those <laughs> and the videos, and then I just make them super corny. Oh, okay. like, I can't, I mean, like I said, we're very professional in here. It's very professional, but we do have fun, and I mean, it's got to look. The reason why it's so clean and so tidy is because if it's not, you then you have messy dishes and messy plates. What's my favorite part? Burger challenge. What is burger challenge? Oh, I like I like to judge. Oh, oh. and we learned some. I, that. I saw that picture. Mm -hmm. that oh, so at Johnson and Wales, we, I got some uh, oh, look new ways of grading and some I like that one. deeper knowledge questions to ask them when they're preparing. So I did get some things to enhance my challenges. So wow. that will just be better off of that and the sustainability is in there as well. So. Like you get to taste the burger challenges? Or oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I eat like a burger and a half on that day. Oh, oh this my was, God. I'm working yeah. on a food truck. Pretty cool. 
Like they're all just running it. Like I'm just I'm. Wendy was outside. They sell like go in there. The students are um, frying churros. We had two different types of tacos. We had a crunchy shell. We had a soft shell. Uh, both corn tortillas. They're they were good. They were making really salsa verde and caught salsa quemada and pineapple salsa and we smoked um, some pork. Nice. So we had a smoked smoke pork. Pork. <laughs> smoked pork taco and then we had a pulled pork. Yeah, it was. Uh, we smoked the pork. We smoked the brisket the last year. Nice. Yeah, we do also. We make mozzarella cheese. They make mozzarella cheese. Like if you. Once you're following us on Instagram, you can see all the past stuff and all the beautiful desserts that are on there too. There's, there's tons of stuff. Alright. Don't bore you with books. any more of my shows. There's more hands. Guy and then Michelle. Yeah, a couple, couple of comments and a question. Um, I just want to comment that every time I visited your program, which quite often. I just want to comment on how professional the kids do a lot. It's absolutely, you know, I can't say this, you know, amazing. Uh, so I want to, I want to say that and prevent both of you. Uh, so, what effect has the culinary institute had on moving out of all the career program? Closing of Nike. Um, what impact is it? Well, yeah. that was our only dual enrollment at one time, so that was effective for affecting us. Uh, not so much now. Um, we don't have a culinary school in Vermont yeah. anymore. That's, that was the last one. There's like like our program and Capstone, as we were talking about before, but it's the only uh, outlet to culinary education besides probably food system stuff and agricultural stuff at other colleges. Um, so, yeah, we can't send them to Nike, but I think that if they took our course, that, that would give them a good edge to not necessarily have to go to school, unless they want to do something more on the innovation side, like food science, where they would need to, but still, you need to know how to cook and bake to go into those, those things and food systems. Like, if you want to be the change, you know, you've got these, like, what, like, five to ten or eight conglomerates that make all the food in our country, right? And if you're thinking that you want to be that change, you have to get the foundations first, and then maybe if you can go to Johnson and Wales and go in that direction, right? So if you do want to further education in that way, it is a career path to make lots of money and to make change. So. Did that answer your question, my Guy? Last, my, my last question is: Did you guys team up today to buy the Cornerstone equipment? And if you did, have you told Michelle and Julie yet? <laughs> I don't have enough space for those no, stools. No, it's not my style. Cool. I think I could get a better deal though if I really wanted those. Well, that's what I was thinking. That's why I <laughs> yeah, we're we're pretty psyched that like Rich gives us a lot of this time and energy. He comes in and he does help uh, judge the challenge, the, the burger challenge, and likes to put the winning one on the menu and. That's cool. Think that's cool and okay. gives them like a card to both the guys or the winner gets to go to Cornerstone where they don't always get to do that and the food truck piece is a lot of work for him and every year I'm like I don't want to make him do this again but then he comes around man I'm like you think you could like bring a food truck to have my little sister and he does but he's that's so cool guy. so so the winning burger gets to be at Cornerstone for a little bit on their yeah. menu that's awesome yeah. it's like a, a special that's great yeah. We need to know when that okay. is so we can all go to the That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, did you have something? So cat tail. Sorry, my cat is bothering me. But uh, yeah, it was more just a comment to say, you know, I I know we all know the value of this, but we had a recent staff meeting and talking about how to make it feel more like a community. And I just want to reiterate that, you know, we talked about eating food and that brings everybody together and it really does. And the baking and culinary arts has just done amazing things in bringing everybody together. Um, we do a, a staff kind of coffee on Fridays and the culinary arts students and 
um, baking arts students bring stuff in. And so all the staff has some time to like, we test them out and we can say, oh, we love this or you just ask all these questions. The students come in and set it up. It really just like shows us that they're tangible products that of what they're producing. And it's just really amazing to see. It's such a bummer that we don't get anything at the beginning of the year and towards the end of the year. Like we can really see how far they've come. Like these just amazing you know, um, beautiful pieces of art, really. And then, of course, we have the lunches and, and so on. But it just really brings um, the staff together and, you know, the students and the staff. And eventually it would be really great to bring that back out to the community. And I just wanted to say thank you all so much for for uh, having this program. And we really, really appreciate the time that you spend with your students and, and on us and making sure our bellies are full. Thank you, Michelle. There's a lot of beautiful um, things that happen here, especially with the, the baking program. So, like I said, if you can get on Instagram and just, you know, come through the, the tarts and the cakes and all the things that I don't have the patience for, Chef Clark knocks out the park with the students. And it's pretty cool that. Just, you know, so all sorts of things. Oh, we just ramen, the new ramen noodles. We did all of them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. That was so good. It was a taste treat all by itself. It was calorie free. It was calorie free. It was calorie free. <laughs> not very often we can actually say that thank you thank you okay are we ready to back yes awesome that was great i mean as always i'm sure it goes without saying i am so impressed with the caliber of instructors that we have and the way that they talk about their students is really humbling and really cool and um we are really lucky to have so many talented yeah. people in there who are so dedicated to this so thank you for making that part of these meetings, Jody. Really appreciate it. Um, next on our agenda, we are looking for some, we're looking for a motion for someone to um, be our delegate for our district at the Vermont School Boards Association annual meeting in October. Um, I'll be going for Montpelier Roxbury School District. Um, I believe before you said you, you indicated you would be going as well. So we're wondering, um, Lyman, if you're able to go. Yeah. Some, yeah. Yes. Okay. And Let just so folks are aware, so we're members of the Vermont School Boards Association. So at this annual meeting, there's multiple sort of policies and, um, and votes that are taken on policies and positions. Um, and so each, each district that's there sends a delegate who can sort of vote on our district's behalf. So we're looking for a motion for Lyman Castle to be the CVCC delegate for the Vermont School Board Association. So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Oh, it's okay. Second, thirds, and fourths. You can give it to Dora. It doesn't matter. To Flora, it doesn't matter. Any further discussion or any questions about that? And I think we get those those items sent to us beforehand if we haven't already. I think the school board association sends those well in advance. We'll discuss the resolutions at our next meeting as soon as we decided. So we'll go over the resolutions so that Lyman has some guidance from our board in how to vote on the resolutions and they'll be included in the, in the packet. Great. Okay, great. Um, uh, I may go through twin, I may go through Twinfield. I mean, so I'll, I might be there. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Um, all those in favor of sending Lyman as our um, the delegate, um, signify by saying aye. Aye. Great. Any opposed? Okay, great. And I'm sorry, it was a little hard to hear. I heard Jana, you said you, you're going to be there. Is anyone else going to be there? Just oh, out of curiosity? I don't, know. I don't know yet. I'm going to try. Okay. Go through Twinfield. Okay. You can sign right. up for us if you don't get to yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I can? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. From here would be great. Are you coming? I don't know. Okay. I, Is Chris bringing a team? 
that I don't know. Either we're going to talk about it uh, okay. this coming week. <coughs> All right. Thank you, Lyman. Appreciate it. You are. Um, okay. And we are also looking for, and forgive me, I'm not as well versed in this. So Visbit is the Vermont School Board's Insurance Trust. Looks like they have an annual meeting coming up as well. Is this is this asking? Do we need to send someone to Visbit as well? Yeah, I'll nominate uh, Jody Emerson to be our representative at the Visbit meeting. Okay. I'll second that. Thanks, Guy. And and Floor, is it a similar structure where our appointee would go to the Visbit annual meeting? And are there votes that are taken or anything like that? Yeah. So. Uh, the difference is, so Lyman will be voting in the resolutions, and that takes place at 4 o'clock on Thursday at Lake Maury. And this then meets at 8 in the morning on Friday, and it's usually the superintendent that they meet for okay. districts, and they and they vote in their resolutions. Okay. Structure. Thank you. Great. Um, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of having our superintendent, Jody Emerson, um, represent us at the Visbit annual meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thanks, Jody. I heard 8 a.m. I'll, I'll be there too, but <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> sure, pass anything. <laughs> um, all right. So next up on our agenda, we have several second readings of um, policies. And forgive me, I wasn't at the last meeting. I was on vacation, but um, do folks need to walk through these? Um, do we feel comfortable voting on them as a block? Do we need to vote on them individually? I'm not sure how much in depth you folks got the last one, if you feel pretty comfortable with these policies. We, we voted on them as a slate. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone um, have any of those policies listed that they would like us to um, to talk through before we um, vote them through for second reading? I think a lot of these are pretty um, straightforward and unchanged from year over year. Yeah, the only one that had any changes was A20 where we updated our meeting time. Okay, thank you. And we should probably revisit that every March. Okay. Great. All right. So I, I'll just read them into the record. So um, we, and I think we do need to vote on a second reading or. If you want a motion, Jill? Yes, please. So I'll, I'll move to approve the second reading and adoption of policy 820, 821, 822. 23, 24, B20, B21, and B22. Thank you, Floor. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Guy. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, great. Thanks, Floor. Thanks, everybody. Um, and thanks, Jody, for all the work on those. Uh, next up, we are looking for committee reports. Do we have a report update from our finance committee? Yes, it, we met. I'm just typing my head up. It, we met last week, and last week it's just spacing now. Yeah, it was last week. Yes, so, okay. It, and we went over the turf accounts with the, with Michelle, and she continues to report that everything is going well. They still have a lot of hours of training it, left. Yeah. And then we looked at the budget timeline that we should be really included in our next packet. Yeah. Other, I, don't, I, I think those were the two biggest things. And then we talk about space, but we also talk about space in at the facilities meeting, and that has been resolved since the, the, the need of the space, yeah. which was really the, the asbestos part. But, other than that, do you can think of anything else that I'm forgetting? Any the, uh, just accounts payable and equipment lease, which is further down our agenda. Yeah, we have two action items that we're going to discuss later. That's all we have. Unless you can think of something else. Just mm -hmm. All right, any, any questions on the, um, the finance update? 
So I guess one thing that I did forget we did talk about are charter. Mm -hmm. But you see it, you're gonna you're gonna see it on the board uh, in the board manual too. So we review the charter as it has been recommended that we look at that. Okay, great. Thanks, Laura. Um, next up, we are looking for an update from the facilities committee. Yeah, we also met last week and we talked a little about um, the asbestos space issue as well. Um, we have our draft charter ready to share. I think uh, we were supposed to do that on the 16th, but it's fine, we do it whenever. <laughs> we're ready. Um, we didn't have many, um, anyone fill out the form except for this last week we did um, for helping us on the committee. So we have um, Mike, I don't know how to spell, say his name, like <laughs> Lick Lighter, I think. Lighter, who's the superintendent for Carwood Union, um, who is, wants to help us out. So that's awesome, given his background. And then Andy Shapiro had um, said he would help us out as well earlier on. So. Um, we'll get a couple more committee members. Um, our next plan of action is to start our vision plan and um, get going on that at our next meeting. So, and we did, we did make an, a revision to the goals. Um, it was a minor one, but yeah, yeah well, we can talk about when we get to the handbook section. That was it. And anybody remember anything else? Um, I know there, I, I was wondering maybe Jody has an update about the asbestos piece. So just for folks, um, recollection, and forgive me if this is, you all know this already, but basically there's some construction work, probably steel concealing tiles that didn't happen over the summer. And so it was going to require, or is going to require us to move classrooms for about three weeks. Um, and it's not like we have spare classrooms to move classes around. I think there might have been some discussion about that last week. I didn't know if there was any update. Yeah, we, um, um, Hannah met with the crew on Friday and they were discussing the draft and we've had, they've done, um, the construction manager has done a great job of responding to our feedback. And so they've basically butted up every one of these to a long weekend or a vacation so that we don't have as much time out of the space. In addition, we only need to be out during the abatement part of it, not the rest of it. So it's about four days that we have to be out of the space. And then the rest of the time, the work will happen after the students leave and into the evening. So it won't impact the programs for as long as we were initially told. So that's really good. That's great news. Thank you. Yes. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for the facilities group? Okay, thanks Terry. Um, do we have an update on program quality? Well, we um, worked on a program quality committee descriptor for the board handbook. So that's been revised and Jody's putting that in. And we also worked on our goals so that we could look at actionable an actionable aspect of the goal so it seemed to be not include action so we're really looking at creating model smart goals mm -hmm. and that's that's what we do and, and, and your makerspace oh i talked about makerspace i went to the generator makerspace annual gathering at the beginning of the summer and it was really interesting to think about, and it also relates to Jody's experience in Florida, what can we partner or how can we work with our sending schools or others who create maker spaces, type spaces at the elementary schools and middle schools to perhaps become a bridge to my, to for student enrollment at the career center. So how do we broaden our outreach? And I was impressed, you know. Where was that, Anna? It's in Burlington, the generator. Oh, right, okay. Excellent. And Harwood is, is, part, is a member, and there are a number of other, you know, members, but Harwood is one of our partners, so 
it was interesting to see how we could broaden our outreach so that young people can realize their passion. Great, thank you. Any other questions for the Program Quality Committee? That just, for some reason, I, we hadn't discussed before, but I um, I guess because my kiddos became standardized tests. Jody, the Career Center students still take standardized tests at their, at their sending school, right? Even as an independent district, we aren't we aren't required to host those. Correct. They take the um, the state tests at their sending school, um, which is still their LEA. We are the ones that we do are the work keys assessments, and that's for the basis of our data. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments on program quality? Okay. Great. Thank you all. So, um, and then. I just okay. want to ask Jody if we are a full time program next year, will we be hosting those assessments? We will either need to host them or, or they will need to go to their science schools the day okay. that they're doing that. Okay. All right, and we, um, we're going to skip negotiations. We'll do an update later in executive session. All right, so now we'll move on to the board handbook draft. So um, do we want to have each committee read your charge? Are those already incorporated in here? Let's see. Some of it was incorporated in. A program quality is in if you're on the, the document that's online, but not in the packet which is diamond. Okay. Or static. I'm not sure we have the facilities one in though. That I don't see it. Um, it's a separate it's document. Done, so we just have to copy yeah. paste it onto the diamond. Oh, facility. So. I, don't, I don't see ours. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do we want to have each committee send their final version to Jody or um, I'm happy to take a stab at incorporating it, but I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, sh I should have it. It's on yeah, page nine. Going. Yeah. So I, Jill, do you want to accept the handbook or what would you want to, what would you like to do or just say is that work? Because it's going to be a living document regardless of what we do, right? It's going to be evolving. We're still working on the We're still goals. working on the goals. Yeah. So maybe, right. maybe tonight we're just reviewing it. Okay. Yeah. We and don't have an action on this. We don't have an action on it. Yeah. Um, and then as our goals, are we going to continue to work on that separately? One, one of the things we talked about, oh, sorry. One, one of the things we talked about in our committee was um, getting a smart template that we could all write our goal actually following the template of the SMART yeah. uh, to put that in so that they'll all have the same language. So we can, that's easy. We can grab that and send it out to everybody if that's what you want. Uh, I don't know how people feel about that. I I think that's a good idea yeah. because I, I think again they're not measurable. They're not you know in some cases right. they're not yeah. yeah. So okay. get around. They're good, but they're not smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And we could just incorporate that in our committee no, meetings. <laughs> yeah. All right. Does someone have that template and is willing to share that with the committees? Floor's got that. Okay. I, had, I had shared it already, but I I'll okay. send it. Oh right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it. That's right. I, I had shared it, but I'll i share it again with you guys while we're great. Doing. Okay. Okay, great. Um and Jody, thanks again for kicking off us having a board handbook. I think that's really helpful. Um are there any pieces anyone thinks are missing in here? And maybe we can sort of think about that as we look at this between now and the next meeting. Um Thank you. 
We've got norms, we've got the governance structure, responsibilities, and each committee, and then our policies. Um, love the acronyms also. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, oh, and this rules, Robert's rules of order. This is really helpful as well. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for creating that. So we don't need to take any action. We can, um, I'm just wondering if we want to put a new version on online, if we have a current version online, or do we want to wait until the goals are set as well? It, uh, the current, it's always updating in real time when I put something in. And so that is what's online. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, anything further on the board handbook? All right, we can move on to the VACTED consortium agreement. Every year, um, VACTED is the Vermont Association of CTE Directors. And every year we take some of our Perkins funds and pool them. And that helps to um, provide for some of the support for our teacher training, the apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm and um, other work that we do together it also it didn't this year help with the cte conference because the aoe was able to put that on speaking of acronyms <laughs> um, but it it sometimes does that it allows for a fiscal agent to purchase so we purchase the work keys curriculum as a consortium together so then each district pays for the number that they need of mm -hmm. tests or of uh, curriculum stuff so it gives us a the ability to buy in bulk sort of mm -hmm. as a state instead of having to do it on our own mm -hmm. which saves us some money and every year we have to agree that we're we're willing to be a part of that so the board has to the one year period decision. yeah so it looks like we need to have a motion to approve participation in the agreement and then jody would sign that agreement and include the date of this board meeting on that agreement um Go ahead, Guy. Quick quick question, Jody. I, I was going through the list. Is there anybody that opts out? Not that I'm aware of. With that, I'll make the motion that we do that. Great, thanks. So we have a motion to approve the board's participation in the VACTED agreement. Um, do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Second by Terry. Um, and this is for fiscal year 24, right? So starting, so we're in the current one year period. Okay. Um, any further discussion or questions? All right, all those in favor to approve the participation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and the motion carries. Jody, it looks like you don't need my wet signature. It looks like you can sign on behalf and then they would just put today you'd put today's date on yep. the bottom as the date the board approved it okay done done <laughs> thank you um next up we have the superintendent's report okay so i um included some of the kickoff stuff it, it felt like it hadn't been that long since our last board meeting um, but we were really excited. I told you last month about Tim Klein, who's a U32 grad, coming to speak with staff, <laughs> which he did. It was a great opportunity. He's going to continue to work with us around purpose and values. Tony and, Stone, uh, right? Yes. <laughs> yep. um, so that was a really wonderful kickoff, and it, I think, brought the staff together and built community around story. Uh, we started with a prompt on what is, well, Oh, they're gone. Never mind. They're over there. Um, I am here because, and part of the the research that um, Tim has done, and along with the other the co-author of the book, is around why people are where they are. And so there's those that are there to get to someplace else. It's like a stepping stone to the next. There are those that are there for prestige in that position, and then the those that are truly believing that it's their purpose to be in the role that they're in. And that's true across any industry. And if you look at the responses from teachers on why they were here, you could see the third, third, and third of that. Um, and then we, the story that we told that day was around a positive experience in learning. And so it didn't have to be our own teaching or our own 
educational experience but something where we learned and it was wonderful to hear such a variety of stories from our staff um, as we did that and Tim actually came in halfway through that because that was our prep to get ready for him to come and speak and participated in that and was really blown away by the staff and and how well we work together and share and um, he offered to continue working with us throughout this year nice. so it's really exciting to have that great to have kids back in the building and to see them all working on their safety gear and and getting ready to go i was telling the program quality committee about an interaction i had with the building trades class today which was really exciting around an opportunity that we might have to work on a renovation project so that's very exciting we've completed that agreement with the Barrytown ems and the ambulance as soon as they can get their sticker off the side will be here and so um, our digital media arts program is going to help us create our own sticker for our ambulance. And we're going to also be talking with Habitat for Humanity around a building on Hill Street. So we're excited to have our heavy trades, um, building trades, plumbing and heating and electrical probably supporting that along with this other renovation project if we get it. And our newest program of studies went to print. You saw a copy of that and it's linked here. Um, so we should have those in hand soon and kick off our admissions process with that. Great. I have two quick questions. What would we use the ambulance for? Would it stay put but be a learning tool? Currently, it's for a simulation lab. Yep. Um, in the future, if we can change a couple of things, we may be able to use it just as some of our colleges, like St. Michael's College does where the students who are in the second year program can go out on calls. So we may be able to support local EMS in the future. There's a need for some um, age changes. Okay, thank you. And the other question real quick, and then I'll go to Guy is, um, it notes, you know here about the open houses that two of the sending schools, um, looks like U32, I'm wondering if we as board members can reach out to our sending schools to have them include CBCC in the open house. Who was the other one that you have? That's interesting. Harwood asked us to also come. So U32 reached out. They have basically in their atrium, they had set up partnership relationships. So there were tables with different partnering organizations. Um, Mosaic was there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another. Affinity, the affinity group and, yep. and uh, community based learning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, Oh yeah, it's branching out, branching out. <laughs> the flexible pathways, flexible pathways related pieces. And when we got the invite, I just reached out to all the principals and asked them if they were interested in having us participate in theirs because I didn't want to attend one without also offering to attend others. Mm -hmm. And so Harwood was open to that and invited us. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um, guy? Yeah, just a couple of comments. Um, really appreciate the uh, the EMS, you know, piece and the Habitat for Humanity piece. It it shows that we're, you know, collaborating with community. Um, Randolph Randolph Tech has been hugely involved in the Randolph ha Habitat for Humanity uh, duplex that they're building down there, and they've received a, a lot of publicity about that. So I was really glad you mentioned that. Although when I look at the place on Hill Street, it, uh, they got a ways to go before we get involved, I think, but maybe not. Well, the the one for Hill Street would require us to partner for the community loan fund, that revolving fund. So we would have to sign off on that and our students wouldn't get involved until spring. Any further questions? What, I just wondering what time our open houses are. November 16th is the next one. I'm wondering what time I put it in my calendar. It is in our public events calendar. And let me go look. 5.30 to 7.30. Okay. All right, we all good there. Any other questions or comments? All right, these are super helpful as always. Um, 
And next up, we have our accounts payable. I think that's, we've received that electronically. Did anybody have any questions or comments on that piece? Okay. Um, all right, next up, the EMS equipment lease, the Freedom Flex Service Proposal. This is a, a lease agreement that I think the board does have to vote to approve us entering into leasing equipment, or at least direct Jody to, to do so. Um, and yeah. I don't know if Jody or Michelle want to explain a little more. I'll do the really short version that I feel like I can do, and then I'll let Michelle fill in any gaps or holes that I have. Um, but basically, we have some really high tech mannequins in our EMS programs, and they get um, serviced every year. That's part of our maintenance and upkeep of those. And we were informed that one of them um, was no longer eligible for service or maintenance, that it's basically done. Um, so while we can continue to use it right now, it will at some point fail and will not. there will be nothing that we can do about it. And so Carl and his colleagues looked into what it would be like to get a different one. It's extremely expensive. And then they found also that they could lease I think it's a three-year lease, and um, if it upgrades within that three years, we would get the newest version um, while we're paying for it. All three programs, medical professions, EMS-1 and EMS-2, would split the cost amongst their three budgets. And so they felt like this was a good option for them over spending, I think it was close to $75,000 uh, on a brand new mannequin. Um, so this is more like $12,000 a year for the three programs to split. Um, so 4,000 per program. What did I miss, Michelle? Nothing, you did a really great job. Yeah, so just to buy this mannequin alone, it would be close to 60 to $75,000. And we still would have to require to do maintenance on it. Um, we've had this past mannequin for 12, 14 years, something like that. Um, so it's no longer in service. We did expect that we were going to be paying for the upgrade or the service of, of the simulation, which is about $3,500 to $4,000 a year. So to lease a new new equipment and everything is included, upgrades, um, diagnostics, training, that sort of thing for the $12,000. I mean, it would be over budget-ish by $8,000, but split between the three programs, they do have that, that set aside. Um, so total, the three-year lease would come in under the Vermont bid law. Therefore, we are not required to go out to bid. Um, it is also a city source, meaning that this is a very specific piece of equipment that's not available through multiple sources. So again, <clears throat> it, that would not require us to go out to bid. But for the three-year lease, we're looking at about $38,000. Um, and it is within our budget this year. Um, and we could make it work within our budget. And it may be something that we need to think about long-term of whether we would be perceptive to buying this equipment or if we want to continue to lease. Um, leasing right now seems like it's the best option for us. And again, like Jody said, if there are updates or new models released, then we have access to those rather than being um, stuck with these old models. And as Jody had said, also, our current mannequin is just we don't know how long it's going to last. It could it could last a a year, two years. It could also last a week or two. We have no idea at what point it's going to stop working. So it's one of those things that we need to to make sure that we have available and working before it goes offline. Um, it also so it'll be used between EMS one, EMS two, and medical professionals, as well as. Um, we're allowing Barrytown EMS access to this device. So, you know, we have multiple, multiple programs and partners that are, that will use this device. I highly recommend we go ahead with this, um, but I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention. Makes sense. Guy? Are there end of life costs for the mannequin? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. 
disposal yeah. time. Yeah, but they'll take it back. And if we decide to renew our contract, we'll just keep, you know, we could just keep rotating so we can make sure we have top of the line uh, products for our students to be using. I presume the guy was referring to the one that's right. no longer made, <laughs> one made that's near death. I, I don't know. Maybe they can use that as a dummy. <laughs> I think Floor has her hand up. A uh, guy, were you finished? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Floor. <laughs> so, so be okay if I make a motion to accept the EMES equipment lease from Freedom Flex Service proposal. Yes, thank you. The finance committee discussed it at large. Second. Seconded by Jana. All right. Any further questions or discussion? <clears throat> All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. All right, now thank you guys. That makes a lot of sense. All right, next up, we are looking for a motion to go into executive session. The language is on the agenda if anyone needs it. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but is someone able to read or make that motion for a negotiations committee update? Oh, I can do it. I have it in front of me. Um, I move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of a negotiations update as premature general public knowledge would clearly place the board and the association involved at a substantial disadvantage. In addition, we'd like to invite Superintendent Jody Emerson into the executive session. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thanks, Lyman. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so I, Can I make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Any questions? Any all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Jana, you win. The motion carries. We're adjourned. <laughs>